what you're doing and listen. This is not a drill. What's the most resilient parasite? An idea. A single idea from the human mind can build cities. An idea can transform the world and rewrite all the rules. Which is why I have to steal it. He's hiding something and we need to find out what that is. We gotta break out of here. In the kick! This was not a part of the plan! Wake me up! Wake me up! I know we have still not shattered that highest and hardest glass ceiling, but someday someone will, and hopefully sooner than we might think. as the galaxies go whizzing by over the glass domed ceiling. Now tell me that doesn't work for you. If it's true, does it change how I live my life? This is something that is not an easy answer because of the magnitude of what we're talking about here. How it will change your life, first of all, when you understand it, is dramatic, to say the least. Will it change you from having to go to your job every day and the things that you typically do every day? No, but when this knowledge becomes more mainstream and these agencies are starting to be held accountable and you understand that they're all participating in this, not just the United States government, not just NASA, but China, Russia, India, all of them have space programs. They all have the same symbolism. They're all doing the exact same thing to their citizenry. And the first thing you have to understand about this is that the deception goes all the way to the top. And when I say all the way to the top, you have to kind of get rid of the notion that the people at the very highest levels are working together. Why would they do this? Why are they trying to hide the fact that we are on an infinite plane uh, or on a flat earth rather than a ball? Well, if you isolate people into the idea that they're on a blue marble that's in the middle of a universe that is really insignificant and there's thousands or millions and billions of other worlds and possibly other civilizations, that makes most people think that we are insignificant and that we did actually come about as some sort of an accident. Now, when people believe that, their minds are much more malleable into being given the idea that there is no God, and there is no creator. And because of that, that also gives the controllers this fertile soil to build other deceptions on. Why do you think that uh, Truman has never come close to discovering the true nature of this world until now. We accept the reality of the world with which we're presented. It's as simple as that. It's about total control, mental, physical, spiritual, every way, shape, form possible. You have to remember how big of a conspiracy this is. This isn't talking about just the JFK thing or isn't talking about just 9-11. It's on an umbrella kind of system to where it is the biggest deception that there is. It actually exposes every other deception and nothing else brings down the power of the elite because it really exposes education, science, the economy, television, museums, universities. Think of all the things that have been fooled. I feel worse for the people that are out there building satellites, the people that are out there actually working for these space agencies the people out there teaching in schools as professors because they would all come to the conclusion eventually, once this gets out, that they've all been contributing to the lie. Why do you believe what you believe? Prove it without using NASA or any other space agency. 
the government or military of any country in the world. Why would I say that? NASA has been proven to be liars time and time again. I could spend a whole weekend here showing you the lies of NASA. How many of you believe your government is 100% honest and can be trustworthy? <laughs> and how many of you know the military answers to their government? Okay, so if those three sources are all proven liars, why would you trust them? Fool me once, right? Shame on you, fool me twice, shame on me. I say, continue to believe pathological liars and you're an idiot. But that's what we've all done. And so, you know, I look at these stuff, you know, we've all seen the textbooks, we've all seen the videos and movies and all these things, and there's so much of it. Do you know what the budget NASA has? You know how much they, they get? How much money they get? Have you seen the movie Gravity? Okay. That's made for about $100 million, give or take. And if you saw the movie Gravity, that was pretty impressive. I saw it on IMAX, big screen, like, wow. I mean, I felt like I was with Sandra Bullock flying around in space, freaking out myself. Okay, this is what they're able to do with $100 million. What are you able to do with tens of billions of dollars a year since the 60s? Now, in my opinion, we're being lied to not only about the shape of the Earth, we're being lied to about the very nature of reality itself. Uh, in 1954, Admiral Richard Byrd, a highly decorated naval officer, conducted an interview where he alluded to the idea that there may very well be land beyond the poles. Admiral Byrd, you've been to both the North Pole and the South Pole. Is there any unexplored land left on this earth that might appeal to adventurous young Americans? Uh, yes, there is. But strangely enough, there's left in the world today an area as big as the United States that's never been seen by a human being. And that's beyond the pole on the other side of the South Pole from middle America. And it's, uh, I think it's quite astonishing that there should be an area as big as that unexplored. That's a tremendous So challenge. there's a lot of adventure left down at the bottom of the world. Well, Admiral, well, do you hope to see that? We don't know. That's the big problem. We don't know where we are, okay? That's what we're all trying to figure out here. But there is the Antarctic Treaty where, you know, 53 or so nations have signed saying that no one's going to lay claim to Antarctica and that there are massive restrictions for travel there. You can't just get up and go to Antarctica on your own. You know, you have to have a, a tour guide with you and there are only certain entry points and there are limits on where you can go search. Personally, I think the unconquered South Face is the only one worth scaling. It's a 20,000 foot sheer wall of ice, but that's never stopped me before. Welcome. No, I just want to stand on top of the wall and piss off the edge of the world. <laughs> What difference does it make? What difference does it make? Yeah, that's their favorite line. Got a lot of people, what difference does it make? You can't figure out what difference it makes? If you can't figure out what difference it makes that the people running your world are lying to you over and over your whole life, if you can't figure out that someone lying to you is trying to control you, suppressing of information of knowledge is control. Deception of information and knowledge is a form of control. So what difference does it make? It makes a big difference because once they start omitting information or lying about information about where you live, they're doing it to control you. Period. Why am I having to explain this to critical thinkers in the truth movement? The way you control billions of people is to keep them divided and fighting each other. Flat Earth is not a PSYOP. Flat Earth destroys the PSYOP. Every PSYOP that's been used to control us.
for as long as they've known about it. So this system has been in power and control for hundreds of years, ever since they convinced the rest of the world that they didn't know where they live. It created this fantastical scenario to make people feel insignificant and to follow those that appear to know better. Why is the flat earth so important? Because it shows the deception. And if everybody would just come together and demand answers, they would be in checkmate. They would not know what to do. Train up a child in the way that he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. I believe that's why we have so many who are indoctrinated to still believe and fight so hard for the heliocentric model. The reason being is because we've been taught the globe model since before we had the ability to think for ourselves. Think about that. Before you could think for yourself, before you could form rational thought, you've been taught that you live on a spinning ball, although your five senses tell you something totally different. Our senses tell us that the earth is flat and stationary, that the sun and moon and the stars rotate above us just as we see, that they make their annual cycles in such a way that we can calculate days, months, and years of the passage of time, just like in scripture. The earth in itself works like a well-designed timepiece, and we all know that any timepiece that we can think of has a designer. What if the lie is to hide the existence of that designer. What if they're lying to us about this because they're hiding God 